Hey everyone, I am doing a chapter reading for Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Uh, this book is called War of Destiny 2 uh, Pursuit into Darkness by Teresa Van Spankeren. The Prologue I sit in our garden, staring at the closed flower buds. It was one thing I missed about being human, seeing the vast array of colors produced by plants. I was never awake early enough to see the beautiful blooms. Roses in particular had a special, if painful, place in my heart. My daughter had been fascinated by the delicate patterns of the petals when we used to sit together. I still wonder what color would have been Maria's favorite if she had survived. The, thro the thought brought sharp, unwanted pain. Even now it was difficult to think of our time in the garden. But I digress from my task. I once again have my book ready to write. The year is 1582, over seventy years after Samuel had rescued me from my husband. We were again living in London, but life was different this time. We had only moved back into the area a few years before, and enjoyed the peace we have had the over last few decades. Our current lifestyle is similar to the one I had been used to as a human. An elegant mansion, finely tailored clothes. The only thing we didn't have was servants. It was interesting to see which vampires were relaxed with this lifestyle and who was not. I am not certain when I turned the corner and actually began to live again instead of simply existing. When had most of my irrational fears faded? Had it happened the night I found out Gregory was dead? I suspected it happened the night I spent in Samuel's arms, allowing him to love me. We have never spoken about it, but judging by the look he sometimes gives me when I'm with Adam, he certainly hasn't forgotten. Neither have I. I honestly believed that my most difficult times were behind me. After all that I had been through as a human, I believed that learning how to become a strong vampire to overthrow the leader would be easy. The rest of the cadet seemed to believe I could do it. I guess I should have asked Samuel for the fine print of our agreement. Maybe then I would have been more prepared for what happened next. Chapter 1 I returned to the house where I had left Adam sleeping upstairs in our room. I smiled when I saw Samuel and Valerie in the parlor talking quietly talking. Besides me, they were the most comfortable with a wealthy style of living, proving beyond any doubt that they were both raised in a wealthy or noble household, just as I had been. Matthew and Marianne were the other, only other ones who seemed comfortable, but I think it was because time had trained them into impersonating the upper class and its customs. Good evening, Julia, Samuel said. Valerie smiled up at him. Her face was lightly flushed with color, the blue and white layered gown she wore showed off her hair and eyes perfectly. Throughout the years I had learned to check my first impressions of people, and though I had been insanely jealous of her at first, we had become pretty close friends. Her will to survive, even though it had been deemed impossible, had reminded me of myself. Good evening, Samuel. Valerie, I said in a way of greeting. I heard Marianne banging pots around in the kitchen off to my right. Samuel looked at me over for a few seconds. He must have liked what he saw because he smiled. You look wonderful tonight, Julia, he said, echoing my thoughts. I glanced down and blushed. I was wearing what I thought was a simple but elegant green dress with a gold border. It was amazing how one innocent comment from him could make me blush, even now. I'm pleased you came out alone. I was about to see Her Highness in a little while. I was wondering if you would like to join me. I gaped at him in shock. Queen Elizabeth? Samuel, how on earth did you manage to obtain an invitation to the ball tonight? Samuel smiled, a little persuasion along with having the contacts, Julia. I thought going there would be a nice thing to do tonight. A smile lit my face. I had wanted to meet Queen Elizabeth since she took the throne in 1558. She had done wonders for our country. I looked up at Samuel. And you would like me to accompany you? I questioned in disbelief. 
Samuel nodded and got up. Hey, he answered, a twinkle in his eyes. I laughed. Samuel, I'm not dressed for a ball given by Her Highness, I protested. Of course you are. Just take a cloak, Samuel answered, his smile widening. I noticed for the first time that his black and green outfit matched mine. Obviously, someone had this planned for a while. Valerie suddenly spoke. You look wonderful. The dress is a perfect blend of elegance and modesty. Go have fun, Julia. I looked at her. Thank you, Val. You look lovely yourself. Valerie laughed softly. Only in case an unexpected visitor shows up at our doorstep. I am not planning on going out right now. I smiled and turned to Samuel. I shall be delighted to go with, I said. Both he and Valerie grinned. Val had gotten so much better, it was amazing. That night years ago, when we had left London, had marked the turning point of her illness, when we knew for certain that she would survive. She had regained her strength slowly in the following years, but even now she admitted she still wasn't nearly as strong as she once had been. And sometimes, and frequently, she also had spasms of pain from the healed wound. The pain was something none of us could figure out. All we could guess was that the muscles had been severely hurt beyond a full recovery. My thoughts were interrupted as Samuel told her that we would be home in a few hours. He looked at me. Ready. I nodded, smiling. Samuel took out a cloak and handed it to me. I put it on and followed him out the door. Samuel, wouldn't it look strange if we drove our own carriage, I asked, following him to the stable. I have thought about that, Samuel answered quietly. This is why I hired a young fifteen-year-old boy from town. Are you sure that's wise, I questioned. It is all right, Julia. The boy has a good head on his shoulders. Besides, he has nowhere else to go. His entire family was annihilated by disease a year ago. It had been years since we had had a human friend. We had several acquaintances over the years, but we hadn't had a true human friend since my brother-in-law. Samuel, you cannot possibly be thinking of telling a child what we are. Not yet, Samuel admitted. I am going to wait until he gets a little older. Until then, I will make up a story to tell him. I doubt that he would care anyway. It would be good for the neighbors to see activity around here during the day, even if it is just him. The boy is just grateful for a place to stay. He became silent as we reached the stable. He pulled open the doors and looked inside. A thin boy with dark blonde hair and green eyes finished securing the horse and carriage and then walked to us. Joya, this is Stephen. Stephen, Joya, Samuel said, introducing us. I reached out and shook the boy's hand. Des despite his being so thin, his handshake was strong. Pleased to meet you, Stephen, I said pleasantly. I suppose you are the one driving us to the palace. A hey, Mistress Joya, he looked at Samuel. Thank you for allowing me to stay here. Samuel shrugged. I hate seeing children out alone on the streets. Stephen looked puzzled and shook his head. I assumed his confusion was because Samuel only looked about five years older than him. Shall we go, I asked, with an amused smile in Samuel's direction. Hey, Mistress Julia, let me help thee, Stephen replied. Samuel hid a smile as Stephen walked to the carriage and held his hand out. I put my hand in his and allowed him to help me step up into the carriage. A moment later, Samuel joined me inside. Here we go, sunshine, he said as the carriage jerked into motion. I looked at him in ex exasperation. How many times have I told you not to call me that? Too many times to count, Samuel answered. Then wherefore do you insist on calling me that? Because I like to, he answered. Hey, Sammy, I said, unable to resist getting the last laugh. Samuel only smiled, though. I scowled at him, then asked, Is Stephen going to stay in the spare room across from me, then? Samuel nodded. He looked thoughtful. How are you and Adam getting along, he asked, staring at the carriage wall. We're getting along much better. Thank you for asking, I answered. I smiled. Samuel? What is it, Julia? he asked. I thank you for what you have done for me. I do not know if I would have gotten to where I am now without you, I said quietly. But, 
what happened between us can never happen again? Is that what you're trying to say, Shunshine? Sunshine? I nodded, looking down at my hands. I love Adam, Samuel. One night of passion is not going to change that. I know that, as long as you are happy. I am, he sighed. You improved so much after that night, but I worried. Never mind. I gently touched his hand. Samuel, I do not regret it, I said. Lord, I owe you a debt of gratitude forever. He smiled at me faintly. Forever is probably exaggerated, he com commented. Mayhap, I answered. I was about to say more when the carriage stopped. We are here, I said instead. Samuel nodded as Stephen opened the door. Samuel stepped out and, da and stepped down and then held his hand out to me. I took it and gracefully stepped out. A human couple glanced at us and then continued inside. I guess we appeared normal enough to them. Samuel turned to Stephen. He was being unusually generous. If you wish, Stephen, you can come in with us. Stephen regretfully shook his head. I am not dressed for that, Mr. Samuel. You do not have to go into the ballroom. Go in and sit with the other servants, Samuel answered, taking my arm. We'll come fetch you when we're ready to leave. Stephen, Stephen bowed graciously. Thank you, he said, and started for a side door. Samuel looked at me, shrugged, and escorted me inside. A couple minutes later, we entered the ballroom. It was filled with laughing and talking people as well as dancing couples. I gazed about the large, beautiful room in wonder. Gold and silver plates and goblet, goblets dotted various tables, sparkling in the candlelight. A servant stopped at our side. Your cloak, my lady? He asked politely. I nodded and let Samuel help me take off the cloak. I handed it to the servant and looked up at Samuel. Let's go find Elizabeth, he whispered in my ear. He took my arm again and guided me through the crowded room to the other side. There was a small group of people standing a little apart from the bustle of the room. I suddenly sensed two other vampires. I squeezed Samuel's, Samuel's arm to get his attention. By the power I sensed, I could tell they were about half my age. Samuel, there are other vampires here, I murmured. I know, I sensed them, he said, in such a soft voice I could barely hear. We quietly walked to the uh, to the small group of people. The queen was among them. I glanced sideways at Samuel. Queen Elizabeth was talking to the two other vampires. They appeared to be speaking in German. The two vampires, a young man and woman, looked a lot alike. Both had dark hair and eyes. They looked up at us, as did Queen Elizabeth. The queen was dressed in a gold dress with a very large ruffle neckline. Pleased to meet you, your highness, I said with a curtsy, watching the vampires out of the corner of my eye. They were watching us just as warily. Elizabeth nodded. Welcome, you are... Samuel did a short bow. I had to bite my lip to keep from laughing. Samuel, bowing. When the hell I... <laughs> when the hell I would ever see Samuel bow again. Lord Samuel Delancey and Lady Julia Smith, Queen Elizabeth. She shook his hand and then mine. Her hair shone like red fire and her blue eyes showed intelligence. She studied me closely. Good day, she said pleasantly. The other two vampires murmured something and properly withdrew to another corner of the room. I turned my attention off of them and we resumed talking to Queen Elizabeth. I liked her instantly, and was sorry when we had to attend to other affairs. Samuel took my arm again and guided me to where the other vampires were standing. Good evening, he greeted coolly. The male vampire nodded at us. Good evening, he said civilly, in a thick accent. He smiled tentatively. Samuel didn't smile back. You are obviously foreigners, from Germany, I presume. But you speak English quite well. The other vampire nodded, his face twisting. A, our creator is English. What are you doing in England? I asked, frowning. I felt Samuel's hand tighten on my arm. We are here tracking the lout down. 
Two weeks ago, he attacked us and fled to his home country. Wherefore didst he attack thee? Samuel asked, sounding both weary and curious. The two exchanged looks, and then the man resumed speaking. Tis because we disobeyed his orders and went to meet a resistance member. Samuel chuckled. Well, then, he would, see, he would have a fit seeing you with us. I am Samuel, leader of the resistance, he said. I smiled but said nothing. The speaker laughed, clearly amused himself. He probably would, if only I had known our trip would be trip here would be so interesting. Who is your creator? Samuel questioned. A vampire named James. The man held out his hand. I am David, and this is my twin sister, Christina. This is my fledgling Julia, Samuel answered, shaking his hand. Good evening, I said, looking at Christina. Welcome to England. Thank you, Christina answered. It sounds as if your country has been in some political and religious turmoil. A, it has been troubled. It has, it had been a troubled time. Queen Elizabeth has done a fine job holding the country together. David and Christina both nodded. Do you wish to join us for a while? David asked quietly. Samuel and I both agreed. We walked over to the food tables and began talking to the other guest. I'm going to stop there. Went over just a little bit. That's it, y'all. Thanks.